<laughs> so we're back from Easter Jeep Safari and uh, unfortunately I did not win 37 inch tires like I wanted to but uh, uh, I did, went ahead and decided to buy them uh, so I've got these uh, these new Mickey Thompsons and uh, so far they're working out I've got them on some inexpensive rims uh, that's a style that I like um, and uh, we're getting about as big as I want to build this daily driver um, because I still have to drive to work. I want to do road trips. So, you know, I don't want to drive, you know, a really built Jeep all the time. Um, but I do want to keep up with Penny. I've been watching uh, April's videos and I, I just want, I want to go play on those trails and this just isn't going to cut it. So I've decided that it's time for me to build a project. I've actually been kind of working on this idea for a couple of years now. Um, but uh, I've, I've got a good start and, and I've got a plan. I've got a plan. This is my new project. Yikes. So this is my, uh, my new project. It's a 1989 Jeep Comanche. And for anybody who's not familiar with the Comanche, uh, what Jeep did um, in 1986 is they took the, uh, uh, the Cherokee, they basically chopped it off behind the front door and put a pickup bed on it. It's a little more involved in that, but that's basically what they did. And so um, I've been looking at, uh, you know, what kind of what kind of rig uh, do I want to do I want to build? Um, Primarily, I want to do something that not everybody else has done, and you just don't see too many Comanches. I mean, you see them out there, but they're not all that common. Um, I wanted something where I could play with the wheelbase um, and kind of have a, a just an open option and a a truggy uh, truck buggy uh, build uh, is is going to be the solution for me um, when I do when I get the rear suspension built. I can place the rear axle anywhere I want. So one of the other reasons that, um, that I picked this is because it is from the door forward, it is a full Jeep Cherokee. All of the front suspension, all of the engine, transmission, transfer case, it's all Cherokee. And they made millions of them and there's millions of parts out there. It's easy to find parts uh, to, do, to do what I want in the front end. Um, and so it'll be a relatively inexpensive but still uncommon build. And, and so I've searched around. I've actually, I'm, I'm up to f having had four Comanches in the last five years. Um, but uh, this one I settled on. I picked this specific one. It's about a third or fourth hand project truck uh, that I bought from a, another guy who bought it from another guy who had started the build. And it already has some of the work done to it that I was gonna do. And so it's a good leg up. I'm, I'm probably not going to use these axles because um, they're Dana 44s and they won't hold up to the tires I want to run. Um, but uh, you know, it's a it's a good solid foundation to start with. So um, one of the problems that you get with old vehicles like this is rust. Um, now, since this is going to be a truggy, I'm not going to do you know you know show quality body work, but. I've got some holes in here. I've got some cancer and I need to I need to stop this rust uh, So that this thing holds together in the long term uh, And again, the nice thing about it being a Cherokee is that Rocker panel replacements are easy to get. Uh, I've got rust in the floor pans. I've got a little bit of rust down here in the uh, cab corner um, And so the first thing we're gonna do um, on the body is get all the rust identified cut out and patched and replaced. So this this truck started as a, uh, a long bed, which was about a seven foot bed. Um, the previous owner um, has already uh, started work, as you can see. Um, he's actually cut uh, a section off the, the end of the frame here um, to uh, get a little bit better departure angle. And I'm probably going to end up with quite a bit more cut off. Um, and, uh, so this, this X frame here, this is actually a stock, uh, the stock way they built the frame. Uh, gives it got a lot of good rigidity, uh, lets it have a, a one ton payload rating. Um, 
But as you can see, it's a little rusty. It's also gonna hang back quite a ways and not give me the structure I need. And so this X frame is gonna come out completely and we're gonna, we're gonna put in some horizontal cross members and then cut this out and then and, and fully box the frame in um, at some point. Uh, also, uh, you notice that the, uh, he cut it off right at the spring hanger. Um, because he was keeping the leaf springs and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, go with a four length setup and so I don't need a frame back here to hold the end of a leaf spring so I can I can bring it in quite a ways and so we'll probably bob it somewhere in here um, depending on exactly where the rear axle lands. Okay, so uh, we measured this and it has a about 121 inch wheelbase currently um, with the axles in the factory locations. I actually don't know exactly what wheelbase we're gonna end up with uh, because we are looking at possibly moving the front axle forward um, and we'll get into that in detail later on. And then, um, and, and of course, being a truggy, I can move this axle, I'm not hanging on the, on the uh, leaf spring, so I can put it here, I can put it there, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we build. So the plan will be, um, since, since this is actually kind of a tight cab inside, and, and it, is, it has some structure, but it's not quite, uh, won't quite hold up to a rollover, um, I'm gonna do an exo cage, uh, just so I can have a good solid cage that I don't hit my head on every time I get in and out. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna cover the front, but then we're also gonna uh, tie that into some, some custom rock sliders down here. And then in the back, I'm going to do um, a little bit of, you know, some down bars somehow. And I haven't haven't gotten all the details worked out, but we're gonna we're gonna create a nice, um, you know, nice triangulation to give this rear end some strength, uh, give it some tie end points for the uh, coilovers, that sort of thing. We'll have an area in here. Uh, I'm actually going to use a part from Penny. Uh, her original fuel tank is going to sit right in here in the center. Um, probably put a box around it, put a filler neck uh, so that it's nice and protected. Probably have a couple of truck boxes to hold spare parts and tools and some other things. And uh, gonna have some an air compressor, so I'll have an air tank in here and, and, and things like that. Um, again, it's you know just ideas that we're starting to uh, to go with, and nothing's in stone yet. And so, uh, this being a, an in work pro project. Um, this engine bay is actually kind of empty, and, um, and so we can see things a little bit better. Uh, this came with a four-liter uh, Jeep engine, which is probably, uh, I'm about 99% sure I'm just going to replace it with a, uh, a, a newly rebuilt uh, Jeep engine. Uh, this being an 89, the, uh, the fuel injection system is an older uh, Bendix, Renix, uh, Renault Bendix, called Renix, Renix, whatever, um, fuel injection. It's hard to find parts for. It doesn't make quite as much power as the HO. Um, and so I actually have a 1993 Cherokee that I bought with an engine that's smoking very badly, and I'm going to rebuild it. Um, this also has a manual transmission. I'm going to go with the AW4 automatic out of that Cherokee uh, because I like, to, I like crawling on an automatic. Um, and so uh, it's it's gonna. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a stroker or if I'm going to do just a straight 4.0 rebuild. Uh, figure that out. Um, so four liter, 4.6 liter, AW4 automatic, and then uh, I'm gonna do something interesting with the transfer case. So this is an NP205. Uh, it's a heavy duty gear driven transfer case. It's actually out of a late 70s Ford. F 250 350 something like that um, and it's a it's a good heavy-duty beefy transfer case it does not have a lot of low range and so the plan is on the uh, input here uh, I'm going to bolt on an off-road designs magnum box which gives it, it makes makes this into a uh, uh, four-speed transfer case. Um, I'll have a 272 to 1 low range, a 1.96, and then when I combine the two, it'll be a 5.33 to 1 um, 
final low range, low, low range. Um, and this thing will take any abuse I, I give it. Um, it's bigger, stronger, beefier, and it's a little different. Uh, it's not quite the, you know, like Atlas, like everybody else buys. One of the reasons I bought this, this Jeep is it's already got some work done to it. Um, and what you can see down here is the long arm kit that's uh, been partially installed. Uh, I don't know the brand yet. I have to go double check what it is, but it moves the uh, control arm mount all the way to the back. Um, this is the factory location for the control arm mount up here. Um, and I'll probably cut these brackets off. Um, but the longer arms give you better articulation so that uh, you can flex as well as Penny does, which is, which is my goal in a lot of these things is can I keep up with Penny? Right now it's sitting on uh, some, some uh, lift uh, coil springs. It looks like about a three, three and a half, four inch lift. Um, I'm probably not gonna keep the coil springs in normal shocks. Um, in part because I just, I want to go to coilovers or air shocks of some kind. And I also might end up moving this axle. We haven't quite decided. Uh, the size tires I'm going to want to run are going to hit into the fenders here. And if I can move the axle forward, um, you know, I'll cut off up here and have, have all my articulation and have plenty of room back here. And if I do that, I absolutely have to do uh, air shocks or... Um, or coilovers of some kind. So this Jeep, uh, as you can see, has come with uh, some upgraded axles. Um, they are a set of Dana 44 uh, front and rear. Uh, they're out of a Grand Wagoneer uh, from the 80s. Um, they are built nicely, but they are Dana 44s and they are not going to hold up to the size tires, um, at least as big as pennies, maybe a little bigger. And, uh, and so. I've already got a friend who's going to buy these for me. Uh, he's ironically got a Comanche project, and, uh, and these are set up exactly for him, so that's what he wants. And uh, we'll, we'll show you what uh, what axles uh, we're going to be playing with. We've transitioned over to Kenneth's and April, and April's shop uh, because I've actually already had these axles uh, for a while before I, I bought my... Uh, uh, or about this this MJ that I'm going to be working on. Um, and so these are what's going to go in it. Um, this is an axle for a different project. Um, this is a front Dana 60 from a 2002 Super Duty uh, F350. Um, nice, good, solid axle. And then this one down here is out of a 2000 cab and chassis F350. It was a work truck with a toolbox on the back. Um, it's a Dana 80. Uh, and the reason I'm going with such big axles is I'm gonna go with really big tires. Uh, and that, um, that's, that's so I can uh, clear some of the same stuff that, uh, that April's running. Uh, she's got a Dana 60 in the rear. Uh, I'm going with a Dana 80 in the with the idea that it's going to be so overbuilt that there's absolutely no chance whatsoever that I'm ever going to break it. Um, but the very large differential housing means that I'm going to need slightly bigger tires than Penny is running to get the same ground clearance, uh, which is not going to be a big deal. Um, it's a truggy. Uh, there's plenty of open space for tires. So um, this, is, uh, this is what we're going to start building. So this, uh, you'll have to kind of excuse the mess, this is a project that I inherited or bought um, mid-stream. mid, mid uh, stream. You can see there's, there's the entire vehicle wiring harness here. Uh, looks like he's been uh, modifying it. Um, my intention is to take the complete wiring harness out of the uh, 93 Cherokee uh, because it's intact, has not been modified, um, and I'm going to use the entire engine harness and it's going to connect into the, uh, the stock dash. I'm going to keep, maybe not this specific one, but I'm going to keep the stock style dash pad. Um, I've got a whole plan for making a gauge cluster uh, with custom gauges. Some of these idiot lights I'm going to move into the gauge cluster and put some switches here and, and, uh, and have some, uh, some, some of that stuff going on. Um, carpet's going to go away. This back card's going to go away. Some of this trim will go back in. Um, it's going to be fairly spartan. I'm going to do 
some kind of um, suspension seats. Uh, we're going to figure out a way to get a harness bar attached uh, to the back, uh, through the cab into tying, tying into the uh, exo cage. Yeah, I'll probably probably put in some kind of some kind of stereo because it's it's nice to listen to tunes while you're while you're going and, and hook up a couple of radios and that sort of thing. But, uh. So another reason I I bought this Comanche um, these unibody frames and it's it's still the uh, stock Cherokee unibody uh, from nose all the way to the to where the uh, uh, pickup frame attaches towards the back. Um, but this is not the factory is not very strong um, and so there are companies that make these reinforcement plates and you can see the plug welds um, and it's formed to the uh, to the unibody and it's just all welded in um, and it gives the uh, gives the body a lot more rigidity makes it stronger makes it uh, makes it easier uh, for the uh, for the whole thing to take abuse and this actually ties all the way in from there all the way up here all the way to the to the bumper mount and there's a cross plate here um, and so this this is a good nice solid piece to, to attach a bumper to uh, for a winch and that sort of thing and having that all done um, saves me all the effort of getting in there and grinding it down and and uh, and having to weld all that stuff in myself so one one decision I have made um, is that uh, I have picked a paint color, um, and it ties back to the fact that uh, uh, my grandfather uh, was a dealer uh, for Alice Chalmers, and uh, and so I kind of like the color, and so that's what we're going to make the cap. So that's basically uh, the rough plan that we've got set up for this uh, for this Comanche. Unlike Penny, um, we are not shooting for a specific target date. Uh, I fully anticipate that this is not going to be uh, done for Jeep Safari for next year. Um, there are budget constraints, um, time constraints. Uh, we have other things that we're working on. Um, we're going to be working on this as we have availability. Um, so videos won't come out uh, quite as rapid fire as they did with Penny. Um, but uh, we will be updating this as we go and uh, look forward to having you all watch and, uh, and see how this progresses.